I'm Linda from paperboutique.blogspot.com. I get a lot of emails asking me how I add sentiments to my Cricut images, so I thought I'd do a video. Well, here's the last card I made using a sentiment. I typically use Photoshop to create my sentiments, but today we're going to use Word because I thought more people would have access to Word. What I do is I try to match the shape as closely as possible to a Word image, and we'll go to the computer in just a minute and I'll show you exactly what I mean. In this case, I thought it would be fun to um, do the oval, and it's if it's an unusual shape, such as if we were going to put a sentiment on this particular shape, what I would try to do is come as close as I could to this particular shape. That might mean, oh, an oval or a rectangle and create that in Word. Well, it'll become a lot clearer when we go to the computer. Like I said earlier, for this card, I didn't use Photoshop, so we're going to use Word. But I wanted to do an oval and make it a little bit bigger so when we go to the computer you can see a little easier. So for purposes of today, I created an oval cut on the Cricut and this is this particular one is 2 inches by 3 inches and I'll show you how to do a sentiment on this particular oval. Well let's move to the computer. Well, let's go ahead and begin. Before we start, I'd like to let you know that I'm using Word 2007. And the very first thing we're going to do is open a new document. The next step is to go ahead and click on Insert, which I've already done. And then we're going to Insert Shapes. And for this particular um, image, we're going to use the oval and it's down here in basic shapes. And then the cursor turns into a cross and then we just kind of drag it into an oval shape. Now we know from earlier that the shape of the oval happened to be 2 inches by 3 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the oval, then we're going to right click and it says Format Auto Shape. Once we select Format Auto Shape, we're going to go ahead and do the size. So we'll click on the Size tab and we'll make the height and you can type in 2 inches which I should have done instead of just using that. So I'll just type in 2 and then we've got the absolute button checked so that we can make it whatever height and size we height and width we want. I'll go ahead and make this 3 inches and then we'll click OK. And as you can see, we have an oval exactly the same size as our Cricut shape. And like I mentioned earlier, you won't always be able to replicate the shape identically, but you can make it as close as possible to the Cricut shape that you want your sentiment to appear on. Next, we're going to insert a text box. And I'm going to click away from this and I'm going to go back. I do this a little bit differently because I want to be able to manipulate the text like I'm using Photoshop. So it's a little different process, but it works really well. I'll hit Insert again, and then we're going to move over here where it says Text Box, and click on Text Box, and I'm just going to select a simple text box. And then I'm going to hit the Backspace key on my keyboard, and I'm going to start typing, and I'm going to type in Happy Birthday. And now I'm going to select this and move it over to our image. And I want it to be larger, so I'm going to drag on the corners of both of the box. I'm just going to click on it and drag. Then I know I want the text to be centered, so I'm going to highlight the text, go back to Home, and click on Centered. And I also want the text to be larger, so I could right click at this point or I can just go up here and let's just make it for purposes of this illustration 28 inches. So now I think I have it pretty close to where I want it, but as you can see, you really can't tell because this text box, you can't see through the text box and there's a border. So to get rid of that, you're going to right click on it go to Format Text Box, then I'm going to go to Colors and Lines, and for Fill, I'm going to click on this box, 
and I do not want color, so I'm going to click No Color. I'm going to click on this box, and then I'm going to click on No Color, and then I'm gonna click OK. And now you can see that the text box is transparent and there's no border. So now you could click on it again like that and then move it around. Or what I like to do, I like to use the arrows. Let me click on that box again. Click on it and select it. I like to use the arrows to bring it down on my keyboard, the left, right, up and down arrows, until I have it pretty close to where I want it. Now you can go back and play with it, change the font, or do anything. Now in this case, it probably wouldn't be like I wanted it. I'd want, you know, I'd want it to fill the oval a little bit better or add some additional words. Say I want to add happy birthday to you. Well, I'm going to do it, do the process again. I'm going to insert another text box so each layer will work independently and then I'm going to backspace this text out of there and then I'm going to say happy birthday to you and we're doing the exact same process again. I'm going to move this bar here and you know we'll still need to make it transparent but we know that we want to change the size and we remember or I remember that the size previously was I believe 28 inches so I'm going to increase the font then I'm going to do the same process again. I'm going to click on the box right click, go down to Format Text Box, Color, we're going to change it once again to No Color, we're going to change the line to No Color as well, and then click OK. And the nice thing about this is now I'm using my arrow keys, I can manipulate this. I don't have to worry about having a space in there. If I wanted to, which I wouldn't want to overlap it that much, I could. I can move the two around independently, and I really like that feature. In Photoshop, you're able to do that. Let me click on it again for you and show you that we're, we could move it, not that we would want to, all the way down. In Photoshop, I do that in different layers, but this kind of simulates that process. And I'm just going to hit Delete and get out of there. Now what we're going to do, and I'm going to talk you through this, and then we'll get back together and I'll show you how it actually works. At this point, I would go ahead and print this on just computer paper on my printer. So I'll run it through and then once it comes out I'm going to tape right here, I'm going to tape the blank oval over the top of this shape and then I'm going to run it through the printer again. But this is very important. Before I run it through a second time you have to make sure that you remove this border or it'll print on top. And so it's the same process, you highlight it, right click, Format Auto Shape, Color, No Color, Line, No Color, and then click OK. Then run it through the printer and you have your oval tape to the top and then you can just remove it. And it's super, super easy to do, but let's get back together in a minute and I'll show you what happened when I, when I printed it. Well, this is what we just printed and I wanted to show you how it turned out. What I like to do when I'm printing the image is go ahead and draw an arrow so I know what direction to put it in the printer. And this is the first oval we created. We did the oval and then we did the text box and this is what it turned out to look like. So the next step, and remember we started out, I'll show you this, we started out with this particular shape. So the next step is to take this shape and tape it over the top of the oval that we just created. And what I like to do now is I like to hold it up to the light, which I can't do here because the way the camera is, and make sure that Happy Birthday is exactly centered underneath this, exactly in the place I want it to be. And remember, if we're doing a unique, different shaped image, we're going to try to get as close to, as possible to that image in, in Word. So once we do that, for this particular one, I used a removable snail tape, but you can also, this is like removable masking tape, you could also put just a little piece on each end to hold it down. And then remember our last step, we needed to remove the border, because if we don't remove the border when we print, it's going to um, go over the top of it. So this went into the machine, to the printer, 
And then what happened is it came out looking just, just like this. And then I just removed the tape and we have our final image. And I can bring the, the card back in. And you can play around with the fonts and do, do whatever particular image you like or shape, a font, etc. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching, and please visit my blog at www.paperboutique.blogspot.com for more projects and ideas. Bye-bye.